Hey guys, welcome to the shed. I've been doing a bit of a clean up of the shed. It's um, got fairly messy over the last few months. I've been doing a lot of projects and just throwing tools everywhere. And I've also been trying to clean it up, so I'm throwing out a lot of gear. Why am I doing this? Well, A, I want to make more room for the bikes, more room to work on bikes. And um, I suppose the ultimate dream is to extend the shed or build a new shed, three bays. But in doing that, I want to get rid of all the crap that's laying around here that's been sitting in the shed for about 30 years. Stuff that I, I look at it and I think, one day I'll use it, but I never do. So, whilst I'm here, I thought I'd just have to do a bit of a talk about this. I'll come a little bit closer to the camera here. Talk about the um, the air filters that I've put onto this bike probably about three months ago. I've done about 2,500 k's with the new air filters on. They're funnel web um, filters. I was about to say funnel web spider. Most of the two, two and a half thousand kilometers of, of um, riding that I've done on the bike with these filters have been in the outback of Australia, up around Flinders Ranges and the like, um, have been in the Murray Lands here in South Australia. And dusty conditions, muddy conditions, um, yeah, a bit of a mix of leading packs and riding behind, behind packs. So what I want to do is rip the seat off and have a look what's happened over the last two and a half thousand k's see whether the pre-filter has done its job, whether the main filter has done its job. So hang on tight, I'm gonna spin the bike around and we'll have a bit of a poke at it. Hopefully I won't drop it. When I get the free bay shed, I won't have these issues of struggling to get the bike around. That's the dream. Start with moving all the crap out of the way. It'd be a lot easier. Smart man would have done that first. Are you stupid or something? Stupid is or stupid does, sir. Okay, got the bike in position now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the seat off, have a look in there, poke the camera in there and see what we can find. Alrighty, let's rip this seat off and have a look. See what sort of a mess is happening down here. Get in there, oh, it's a bit dry. Bear with me. Let's try and get off. Okay, pretty dusty in there, the old tool area. So I've got my basic tools and the wheel spanner, a um, couple of bits and pieces, I'll give that a bit of a clean up there. Um, this is easy to get off because I've did the old um, hack to this where you turn the bolts upside down. Um, good old mate, Ryder Guider, he's done an awesome um, YouTube presentation on that. I'll put a link down below on how to do this. So it just eliminates having to use the um, Allen key which sits in there to undo these two little bolts here, get this seat out. So. Because it's loose like that, it's easy to remove. So I'll put down there. Oh, okay. Rightio. So this is about two and a half thousand kilometers worth of dust in there and also water. So I've done a few um, minor creek crossings, wet roads and the like, and you can see it's all, you know, sort of built up around there. I'll give this all a bit of a clean up, a bit of splash around there. Now with the um, tenor race, you know, you've got your air box there. These sections here are your main intakes for air. They're coming up through this section here. So anything sort of splashing up around here, up around here, will get absorbed up into this area here. Uh, yeah, I tend to keep this fairly clean. I'll, I'll give this a bit of a clean out. Uh, it won't take long for rust and the like to set in there. And next minute we know, yeah, you've got dirt in there, dust. Get a bit of moisture in there and that's going to create a, a track for, um, you know, leakages and that with the electrical system. And, could lead to blowing fuses and all that. But we're here to talk about this thing here. So this is the funnel web pre-filter. It's looking pretty good. You can see some spots there where it's um, still quite oily and that hasn't picked up a lot there, but overall it's pretty good. It seems to be more, more dirt around this side here, around the base there. It seems to be on this upper side of these pyramids, I'll call them pyramids, not so much on the other side. So let's take it off. Okay, that gunk, well that gunk it's saved. 
So yeah, it's, it's it's catching a fair bit. I don't know if a bit of this is the water coming through up into the airbox. You can see all the splash marks and that, and it's just sort of the airfield had's got wet and it's um I suppose safe that getting through to the main filter through to the engine. If so, looking at that, it's done its bloody job. Um, still quite oily down there. I'll give these a clean out and not add as much oil this time. Bring it out a little bit better. So in here, it's pretty hard to see. I'm, I'll just grab, grab my phone. Messy workbench and we'll chuck a light on that. See if we can get a bit of light in there. So yeah, it's a little bit better. So yeah, it's, it's done its job. It, it's sort of, you know, it's caught, caught all the dust around the edge there. Stopped it from getting in there. Look, when I look in there, it's, um, get the phone out of the way, Martin. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. There's, there's a bit of, bit of dirt around the top. Bit of dirt there. But all in all, that's a filter that, um, yeah, I would not need to clean. Now, obviously, if I didn't have the pre-filter on, all that gunk there would be sitting in there, and that'd be a, a new filter being um, put in there, or I should say a clean filter. Um, clean it out and, and obviously put it back in. I suppose the good thing is if you're doing a lot of trusty... Jeez, ah, mixing up my words again. Hello, dogs. What are we bashing on back there? Um, yeah, I suppose the good thing about this is is by using a pre-filter, we caught all that dust there, stopped it from getting into the main filter, and if we were out on a big ride, if this got totally clogged up, we could, I suppose, pull that off, take it off, put it over there, and continue riding with just that one there. So we're getting twice as much the distance, I suppose, if you look at it that way. Or you have a second one of these and, um, you know, do a change over there and put a clean one in. So having a look around, so I'm not sure how much I can get out of this. Try to position this camera. Yeah, it was looking pretty good. Seems to be a bit sort of dirtier on that side. So it sort of tells me that looking at it, so if that was sitting in there, it's drawing a lot of air from the right hand side of the bike, dragging across and seems to become straight back against the filter there. So I'm not sure if that's sort of a bit of a vortex going in there, it's just catching there. But at the end of the day, the main thing is it's worked. Would I recommend the FunnelWeb's filter system? Absolutely. Um, the old system that was on here, I believe it was a uni filter, that was mighty fine, but I think this is just that one step better. So all in all, it's a thumbs up from me. Okay guys, so that was a quick presentation on the FunnelWeb filter that I've had running on my bike for the last two, two and a half thousand kilometers. It's, it's um, fairly dirty, it's done its job, it's paid for itself, which is really good to see. Um, yeah, it's... Would I recommend it? Absolutely. Absolutely recommend the FunnelWeb filter. I'd also recommend the Uni filter that used to be on it, um, which come standard with the bike. It worked quite well. I sought the opportunity of using this because I do a fair bit of dusty riding in the outback and the like, and I thought I'd just give that a little bit of extra protection. But as you can see, the pre-filter, if, if you're going to buy this filter system, make sure you get the pre-filter. It's bloody worth it. Anyway, enough for me, enough on the side of my face. Have a good one. Like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye.